Hey guys, welcome back to Set Streets Needs. I'm Chris Bauer. I am in the city of Seattle in the state of Washington this weekend. I'm pretty excited to go see some old friends and get some great food and see this great city. And I hope you join me. Let's travel. So this morning I'm out here uh, checking out one of Seattle's very famous landmarks and that is the Fremont Street Troll. Um, it's under the Fremont Street Bridge. I believe this is Fremont Street. I could be wrong. I'm not sure exactly. This is in the suburb of Fremont so I'm not sure if it's Fremont Street or just talking about Fremont. But it is the Fremont Troll. It's under the bridge. Um, You've probably seen them before and not realized it, but they had a scene here in 10 Things I Hate About You with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and I forget the actress's name. They were on a date here, and they came by the troll and posed with it and, and had a scene in here. But uh, uh, it's definitely a cool place to stop whenever you're in Seattle. And uh, cool art sculpture, you know, trolls and bridges kind of go hand in hand, so... You can climb all over it, and take pictures with it, and uh, it's pretty cool. Also, in his left hand, he's holding an actual VW Bug, or what used to be a VW Bug. It's all sunken in to the ground now. actual car that he's got in his hands. So I'm outside the Linwood, Washington Chuck E. Cheese. Um, this seems to be a two-story building, which is an interesting design. It's a little bit different looking, but still has the old signage on it, so they haven't gotten the uh, the 2.0 renovation yet. I'm not sure what's on the second floor, if that has anything to do with Chuck E. Cheese, but they've got a very specific three-stage that I'm excited to see, so we're going to get in there. This is awesome. So they have the first ever Cyberamic three stage. Uh, Cyberamic animatronic characters are a lot simpler uh, to run and simpler made than the old Rocket Fire Explosion animatronics. They have eight movements or less. Sometimes if you have more movements like the King did, they would add a second box to run it so it would have more movements. Um, so that each box would be programmed to do specific movements. But these ones, were the first ones put in by Chuck E. Cheese. The cool thing about here in Linwood is they still have the old showroom. So you can tell where this used to be all closed in and they could keep it dark. And it's even still very dark up here. Um, and we'll see when the lights start and whatnot because they've got lights right up in here as well. So it may dim in here, I'm not sure, I'm excited to see.
So you'll notice that these look a lot different from the Rock of Fire concept unification animatronics. They're completely different builds, uh, different mechanisms and all that. Um, which makes them, you know, unique to Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese started putting, using Cyberamics uh, in 1979, so it was really early on. They had them in some of the balcony stages and in the um, rocker stage, road stages, all those. Uh, those are all Cyberamics. And uh, I believe the only other uh, animatronic that has more of it, which would be the Studio C series, would be the uh, Garner Holtz. So this is... This was their uh, primary for a very long time, but uh, I'm still more impressed with the the showroom. Most Chuck E. Cheese's just have that open floor plan, and they don't have the showroom skeleton still here. So that's pretty cool to see. This is the first one I've been in that you can really see it. This location actually used to have Rock Fire Explosion uh, animatronics because it has always been a three stage here. Um, they're not really sure the reason that they switched those out or where the Rock Fire Explosion original skeletons went. Characters, I should say. <laughs> they were no longer Rock Fire Explosions when they moved them out of here. Obviously, they would have been a full Munches band going to some other three stage or destroyed, I don't know. Uh, but they replaced them with the Cyberamics for some reason. Um, some of the background uh, buildings are from ones and two stages, different builds. Uh, just kind of cobbled it together and to make it its own thing. Uh, but it looks great. It's kind of a small store outside of the showroom here. Um, it's just, of course, the, the games and rides and a uh, small area for the uh, counter in the kitchen. Uh, all real condensed. Doesn't look like the second floor has anything to do with Chuck E. Cheese, so I'm going to guess on the other side of the building there's another business that must be up there or something. So. Uh, but it's an interesting building type. It's definitely not a traditional looking Chuck E. Cheese. So, so I gotta say, this location more than any other is a jackpot for art. Look at that. They've got all the old Showbiz Pizza Time art. Showbiz Pizza Time Inc. 1993. I haven't seen that one before. That's awesome. The gang goes out to the theater. I've seen these before. These are really cool. Uh, Chuck Trek, the MTV spoof, the C Files, Friends. Now, I have not seen the Friends before, um, which makes sense. 1998, that would have been the uh, prime time for it. CEC World News. Kind of some uh, baby like art. Not seen that before. It doesn't have a date on it, so I'm going to guess it's more modern. Some old classics. Of course, you got the War Halls. Man, I dig this one. It looks like they're seeing Hollow Dolly, if I had to guess. And also from 1993, the gang goes to the ball game. They're there to root on the Cheesers. Not sure what city they play for. We, of course, have Pasquale, Jasper selling hot dogs, Chucky's pitching. I don't see the rest of them. Not really sure what's going on with the shadow, though. <laughs> they also have the drive-in. They got the full set. Also from 1993. Awesome. They've also got this really cool piece right by the front entrance here. It's the Chuck E. Cheese in the Old Derby and the Tuxedo. Now, I don't know a date on there. It's covered in the corner. I'm not sure if it was even on there. If you know the date on that, post below in the comments. Um, but man, that's cool. Cause it's got the, it's got the eyes that are, they pop out a little bit. They're lenticular. So they follow you, as you can see. And but it's cool to see him in the the old outfit, the the original hat and the cane and, and the tuxedo.
Well, Chuck's mouth's not moving a whole lot. While he's jamming them drums, he's very obsessed with whatever's up here in the corner behind us. His head doesn't seem to like to go forward a lot. Or he's just mad at the rest of the band. There he goes. Oh, no, he's done. Did you guys leave Pasquale out of the volleyball tournament? Come on, Jasper. Apologize. He's got the blinks, and he's got body movement, but the mouth is definitely not moving. Sorry, Chuck, no talking for you. Or in this case, singing. Jesper's getting it on that guitar, though. He's working the cheese real well. I guess instead of shred, I guess he could shred on that. It's shred cheese. He's shredding or he's uh, grating. He's grating on that guitar. Besides it being such a unique three-stage setup, uh, the art here is definitely the real gem. Um, just so much of the old art all in one spot. Uh, I don't know if it's always been here, but it probably has. Um, usually you only see one, maybe two of those older uh, showbiz Pizza Ink, different uh, portraits in a, in a location, if they have them at all. Most of them don't. Um, but this has a whole pack of them. So there's at least five pieces from that era. So it's pretty cool. So this stage has the wink. Um, unlike Billings Montana's three stage, it does not say in Pizza We Trust. Now, I am not sure which of those two versions is more rare. Um, or the third version where it's not a wink. Uh, feel free to post below if you know the answer to that question. Um, it's pretty interesting that there's a lot of different versions, or there's several different versions of it. But uh, it seems like one of those things you would just put in every one of those three stages, but the fact that they made several different ones is interesting. Well, this has the cool stage and the cool art, but I'm gonna get out of here because I got dinner with an old friend of mine back in Kentucky. No token to rub. However, while we're out here, I'm gonna show you something very unique to hear and one location, I believe in Guatemala City? I could get that wrong, somewhere in South America. But this sign behind me spells out Chuck E. Cheese and multicolored lights at night. Obviously it's not lit up right now, but this is one of two. It's at this location and at the one in South America. It's the only places they put it into. Not sure why, but it is pretty cool looking. I am downtown, or just outside of downtown Seattle at the Hotel Albatross. I'm going to be having dinner with an old friend. Uh, hi! Oh, 
I can hug you from right here. We're almost the same height. Oh my god! It's been good to see you. You know, I haven't seen you in five years. I know. I was five looking years. that up. So Megan and I have known each other for well over a decade. Well over a decade. Well over a decade. I don't, what, do you remember the year that the Derby Girls started? Well, we started bouting in 2009. So, so it would have been 08 ish? 07. I don't know how long you guys practiced. It was, a, it was like a year and a half probably before we had. So I remember meeting you at the first, ba or first scrimmage in Evansville. That She had blonde hair. And there she is. You still have blonde hair. Well, you've gone through red, blonde, all kinds of colors. All, all, all the colors of the world, <laughs> for sure. But you were on the Radioactive City Roller Girls in Paducah, Kentucky. Yes, I was. Yes, and I, was. I used to announce for the bouts, me and uh, Lauren. What was his? Kid Kosher. Kid Kosher. <laughs> he was a radio disc jockey at 96.9. And we used to do all the uh, derby announcing, and we were terrible. I couldn't understand the sport enough to announce it, much less to become a fan of it. We did it. Oh my god, I could not get it. You announced like, horribly. Uh, like, well, so someone's partly. going in a circle. The only thing you did, Jammer, was just make fun of everybody. Yes. The whole time. The whole time. Um, literally, I think the worst announcer in history. I think. That would probably uh, yeah, you be win. up for that. You're the champion. I might be. Congratulations. I might be. So, so yeah, we became quick friends, and now here we are in Seattle, yeah. in her hometown, and we're gonna have a delicious meal. Yes, we are. It so comes with there. toast points. It's pretty fancy. So it's extra virgin olive oil. Uh huh. Herbs, goat cheese. Oh my god. Black pepper I mean, and honey. So it's honey. Oh my god, and goat cheese is my favorite. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do some of that. You wanna you want a toast point? I want a toast point, please. Um. Oh my god, I can smell all the herbs in this. I know, all right. I don't know. It's, it's a cheer it's a toast, toast point. Oh, that was really good. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, hold on. Okay, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna let that wash over before a minute. Wow. A lot of wow. In one little tiny bite. It sure was. I love that. It's very sweet. Oh my god. It's very acidic. It's not good for mustaches. Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, that honey's the perfect finish for that. Because it's really garlic and herby, mm -hmm. but with that honey at the end. Oh. Yeah, it's perfect. Oh my god, that's so good. All right, so I'm gonna try the risotto underneath first, which I think that's what that is. I'm like a better risotto. Oh, wow. It looks really good. It is really rich. Please jump into this. I'm jumping in. Oh, wow. That's really rich. There's bacon. That is really rich. It's just really smooth. It's got yeah, some spinach in it. Yeah, I'm liking everything that's happening in this mouth right now. What are the notes you're tasting? Uh, there's, in, there's this really good... It's like a sauce, so like a steak sauce, but not like an A1, but like a, a really rich sauce you would put on a steak is what that aftertaste is. But it's like the, the risotto is just so creamy and it marries with it perfectly. That's, that's really solid. Now I'm gonna dip into the meat, the shrink. We're gonna get some meat, we're gonna get some of this risotto, we're gonna get some of this sauce. Uh, yeah, that's um, that's pretty good. I'm gonna try some of this uh, chutney on top with this meat and this risotto and this sauce. Oh my! 
we have arrived at Flavortown, as Guy Ferreri Don't. would say. <laughs> Can we not ever do that? We have arrived at Flavor Village. Copyright pending. <laughs> Can we not? No. Mm, I'm leaving. Flavor Village. <laughs> Flavor Township? <laughs> Right, here's the deal. I never eat pork. Why? Do you I not just, like the taste of it? I just haven't had pork and... Do you want to have pork? I'm going to have pork because you're so convincing right now. I'm telling you, this is gonna be a good pork bite for you. You like pork again. Because if all pork tasted like that, you would never not eat pork. But that's the beauty of a pork shank. It's meant for once in a while. Holy shit. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. I haven't had pork on purpose. <laughs> accidental bacon. <laughs> There's always accidental accidental bacon and everything. Whenever I go home, aka Kentucky. Yeah. Like everyone wants to take me out to dinner. Oh like, right. You gotta try this new place. Yeah, called Cracker Barrel. <laughs> you know, so, they have great breakfast. I mean, I'm not disagreeing, but we go to Cracker Barrel. Right. Everything's cooked in bacon. Right. It is, I get the vegetable plate, but everything. Wait a minute. Everything's cooked like the. There's a vegetable plate at Cracker Barrel? Even before I was a vegetarian. I always ate the vegetable plate. I'm surprised that a Cracker get Barrel. Fried that... okra, green beans, corn, mashed potatoes. I'm surprised the waitress doesn't pull out a pistol and just shoot you. <laughs> Girl, this is the South. You want some biscuits with that <laughs> veggie pancakes. plate? Get your pancakes. That is hilarious. It's delicious, but everything is cooked in butter. No, and it's corn. not. A vegetable plate is never delicious unless it's accompanied with something else, like meat. <laughs> Right. Everything is cooked in bacon. Oh. Everything That's is delicious. That's the way the good Lord wanted it. Uh, I'm ready to say it. This pork chain is better than the East Coast pork shank. Um, West Coast is best coast. Baby. West Coast is best coast in this scenario. In the pork shank world. This is fantastic. Not taking anything away from the pork shank at Husk. Husk is a delicious restaurant. Where was Husk? Charleston, South Charleston. Carolina. I'm going there next year. Are you? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You need to watch my Charleston vlog because okay. I ate at like eight restaurants and oh, bars. good to know. Because it was like. For a bachelorette party. Oh my god. But not like. I think you had those kind of bars. Bachelorette party. Not like a Nashville bachelorette party. Oh yeah. Those get wild. Yeah, they get wild. Yeah, they get wild. Oh, yeah. Those get wild. Charleston's more like, ladies, let's go antiquing to celebrate our bachelorette hood. <laughs> we just want to go sit by a beach. Right. Like, right. That's really what it is. It's, it's got a nice beach there. But they also have wonderful food there. Perfect. Funny story, best story, at the airport, I was standing at luggage claim, right? And I'm waiting for my bag. I just got back from LA, and I look over, and Peter Frampton's standing next to me. Swear to God, Peter Frampton, couldn't believe it. And we're standing there waiting. We're just standing, no way talking. You're just standing we're standing next there. To Peter Frampton. I'm like, I gotta say something. I was just like, Peter, huge fan. Oh, thank you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, can I get a photo? He goes, no. <laughs> you piece of shit. End of story. <laughs> what? I had to move. Like, there was nothing. You can't just keep standing there next no, to him. You, you after you just flat out like, you no. You were shamed at baggage claim. And it was like, shamed. well, I, I guess I better wander away. Because this is awkward. <laughs> And it was. But, I mean, for me, not for him. He no, went right he back to staring ahead. Literally. But no one else noticed he was Peter Frampton. Which is crazy. Who else? I mean, I don't know what Peter Frampton looks like. What? 
I know who Peter Frampton is, Frampton is, but I don't know what he looks like. Megan Brown, you disappoint me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The man's a legend. He's only in the Rock and Roll legend, Hall of I'm Fame. Not an idiot. I know who he is. If you're standing next to him at a baggage claim, you're gonna ask to take a photo with him. He's gonna tell you no. Yeah, he won't tell you no. He was fine telling me no. You're damn right he wouldn't tell me no. No. Oh, that's what he looks like? No one's he gonna tell like Megan no. He looks like a really, like, he looks like a Jimmy Buffett type. Totally does. Totally right. does. Like, I would think he's Jimmy Buffett before yeah. Peter Frampton. Well, he doesn't look like Jimmy Buffett because Jimmy Buffett looks different. He's a different human, but yes, he's a Jimmy but Buffett look type. At, look at that. I know. That's a Jimmy Buffett type. Right now, he's singing about a salt shaker left in the sand. He's not. He's singing Peter Frampton songs. He's still alive. Yeah, I know. I saw him at the National <laughs> Airport. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I feel like you would have gotten a photo with Peter Frampton in that situation. He was just like, I'm not going to take a photo with this guy. However, look at this However. wonderful little bunny over there. With probably red hair at the time. Red, look at that redhead. On my red hair days. I know, yeah, red hair. Orange bangs. Oh, I'll throw up a picture of Megan's red hair right here. You don't have to do that. It already happened. <laughs> you can't stop the internet. This cobbler is spectacular. It's got the crispy outer edge. The, the melty ice cream on top is making it super creamy. And the uh, apple cranberry mix in the middle, unbelievable. Oh my, is that raspberry jam? Tastes like raspberry or blackberry? I think it's blackberry. Is it blackberry? Oh my yeah. goodness. These beignets are so hot in the middle. Crispy on the edges. Oh wow. Those are a treasure. And there are so many of them. I know, there's a lot. Steam coming out. Mmm. Mmm. These are some very rich desserts. They just taste like donuts. Yeah. Yeah. Cafe Du Monde is a little bit better on the airiness inside of it. But the flavor in this is really spectacular. I Cafe Du Monde, of course, is Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah, Cafe Du Monde in New Orleans. They're kind of the ones that invented the uh, beignets. Really? Well, they probably didn't invent them. But that's like the American standard of a French beignet. I've never been to Louisiana. Really? New Orleans is made for you. I thought so. Yeah. It's a fun town. And it has amazing seafood. And fun. As you would expect. Uh, the goat cheese honey, uh, garlic herb goat cheese with honey topping. Damn. Was unbelievable. Um, we got by the way, we are done with dinner. I know that we were just there, but we are done. Having a few drinks. Clint's joined us. That's Megan's husband. Megan's over there, and I'm right here. And we're digesting that wonderful pork shank. That's right, I had a pork shank, and it was unbelievable. Anyway. Hotel Albatross. What was your favorite thing? Um, the toast squares probably were my favorite thing, but the oysters were also delicious. Everything was. Delicious. Yeah, the oysters Rockefeller were really good. Yeah. Yeah, Everything those toast was squares. So good. That the goat cheese. Was oh yeah, the service was unbelievable. Big fan. Tommy. Tommy. Tommy, you are a waiter. You know who you are. I'm sorry, I don't remember the other guy's name, but he was. Didn't also learn it. A doll. Didn't learn it. Didn't ask. My bad. Anyway, Hotel Albatross was delicious. Go get some. So just east of Seattle, there is a Chuck E. Cheese here in Bellevue, Washington. And I'm gonna go check out their one state, and this is my first one.
so I'm struck by first by how tall the stage is. Um, I mean, it's a good four feet off the ground. That's probably the tallest Chuggy Cheese stage I've seen yet. Um, of course, they're uh, cyberimic uh, animatronics. Um, all on one stage. I, I've, of course, many times heard of the uh, one stages, but I've not seen them. This is my first one here in Bellevue, Washington. I think the cool, unique feature, uh, one of the things, that, A, Chuck is holding a microphone, because, you know, he's performing. But the other really cool feature is uh, he's on the turntable so that when they do the live Chucky when he comes out, he'll turn around as if he came off the stage. So it'll just be a, uh, I guess a brick wall or whatever it is when he comes out. But he'll turn into the stage and then the live Chucky will come and interact with the kids and all that. So uh, I think that's a pretty cool feature. Um, yeah, that's pretty neat. They got a really colorful city Behind it, I've noticed that it's a lot different from the one or two, or the, sorry, the two or the three stages. So the cityscape is a lot more colorful and fun. Um, so that's neat too. That uh, adds to the fun of it and the brightness of it, I will say. They all look to be in pretty good shape. I briefly talked to the manager. He's not sure exactly when they're going to get the uh, 2.0 remodel. However, look at what we got here. Now it's three of a kind showbiz wiki. Come on, pull it together. So that is that drum head is at the CU one stage in Springfield, Illinois. It's also at the Billings, Montana location. Uh, and now here at the Bellevue, Washington location. So um, yeah, that's three so far. So one of you guys posted below on the uh, Billings video and said that it's in a lot of different ones, which once I saw the second one, I kind of figured it was. But here we are. I've seen three of them in two weeks when uh, Showbiz Wiki said that there was only one of them. Notice that there's no wink above the stage. Comment below if you know that other one stages have the wink. It seems like it's kind of set up for it with those nice curtains up there. It seems like it would be a perfect addition or maybe they just took it down from this one or just maybe one stages don't have them. I would be interested to hear. They also have some late 90s art around the store. There of course is the men in black piece the Andy Warhol smaller versions. Yeah, it looks like 1999 is about the oldest piece of art they have between the Men in Black and here. The rest of stuff's mostly the modern stuff you've seen before. I see Jesper's not sitting on his barrel. He's sitting on the old pizza oven down here. Maybe he's got pizza cam trapped in there. Oh. I like those... Uh, the Chuck E. Cheese, like the, the really tiny LEDs light up. It looks completely flat and black when it's not being operated, but it has the Chuck E. Cheese name in green lights that shines through. It's pretty cool. Well, that was my first one stage here in Bellevue, Washington. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, my visit to Seattle, and I hope you guys come back for more. We'll see you on down the road. Bye now.